If you want to know the step-by-step -step process to apply the permanent residency of Canada in the year 2019, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll tell you each and every step involved in applying the PR of Canada through the Express Entry program. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hello everybody, this is Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad. If you want to immigrate to Canada or Australia without paying hefty fee to the consultants, please visit my channel. I've got tons of videos on the immigration process of both of these countries and I regularly upload videos every week. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it right now and press that bell icon so that you can get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Okay, now I uploaded this video in April 2018 which was the step-by-step -step process in the year 2018, of course. Now, a lot of things have changed since then. Rules have also changed. So you can say this video is an upgraded version of the earlier video. And in this video, I'll tell you the new rules. And also I'll put in some more details like the cost involved, the processing times, the validity, etc. So let's begin. Okay, so I've divided the complete process in overall six steps. The first step being education credential assessment. The second step, language proficiency test. The third one is creating the express entry profile. The fourth one is arranging the documents. The fifth one is submitting the application. And the last one is visa stamping. Okay, so let's begin with the first one. Education credential assessment or ECA. An ECA is a report by an independent company that evaluates your foreign education. This report is used to make sure that your foreign degree, diploma, certificate is valid and equal to a Canadian one. So mind it, your ECA is not done by the Canadian government. It's done by a few independent organizations and those organizations are Comparative Education Service, University of Toronto. The other one is ICAS, International Credential Assessment Service of Canada. The third one is IQAS, International Qualifications Assessment Service. The fourth one is ICES, which is International Credential Evaluation Service. And the last one is WES, which is the most famous one as well, World Education Services. Now, WES is most famous because the processing times of WES is the least among all of them. Okay, now the assessment is done for all the degrees, diplomas, doctorates of both primary and secondary applicants. So if you're applying with your spouse, ECA needs to be done both for you and your spouse. There will be two different applications. Now the documents required would be original transcript in sealed envelope and the copy of degree diploma certificates. Mind it, 10th and 12th degree certificates and mark sheets are not at all required. So this is all what is required. The validity is five years. The cost is around 200 to 250 Canadian dollars. The processing times is one to four months. One month is the best case scenario if we apply it through WES and everything go well. Even WES nowadays take around 1.5 to two months. While if you apply it through the other organizations, it's like three months to four months. So it differs from one organization to the other as well. So this was all about ECA. If you want to know more details, I've got a few videos. I'll provide the link in the description box below. You can check them out. Now, the second one, language proficiency test. You must prove your language skills by taking an approved language test in all the four modes of communication, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Test needs to be given for either English or French. You can appear for both English and French and you would get additional points for it. So if you know both English and French, it would be an added advantage for you. Now tests for English. IELTS general test, which is generally conducted all over the world. CELPIP general test, which is conducted in Canada, India, UAE, USA and Philippines. In India, it, is, it has got only one test city, which is Chandigarh. So uh, you don't have many options in India, but in the other four countries, you do have many centers. Tests for French, TEF Canada and TCF Canada. Now the validity is two years from the date you get your test report. And the fee is around 250 Canadian dollars. 
while the time is around 1.5 to 3 months. The fee might differ from one country to the other. So you can go on and check the fee structure for your country for different tests. Now I've given the time here as 1.5 to 3 months because you know I've taken one month as the preparation period and 15 days for the results. If you go for the IELTS uh, let's say computer based test then you do get it in one week or I think four or five days. However if you go for the paper based test in that case you get the result in uh, 13 days. So also you might not get your desired result in the first attempt itself so you might have to reappear in that case it would take more time. Now the first and the second steps are totally independent of each other and to save time they can be done in parallel. So this is a very common question if uh, we have to do the ECA first and then go for IELTS. No, both are totally independent processes and it involves totally different organizations and there's no link between these two. You can go ahead and give your language proficiency test and also get your ECA at the same time. Okay, now the step three creating your express entry profile. There are a few prerequisites before you create the profile. You should have your language test score and your ECA report ready with you, which means your step one and step two should be implemented before you implement your step three. So based on your job duties, a NOC code needs to be chosen by you. What is an NOC code? NOC stands for National Occupation Classification and it is a system to classify jobs which are grouped on the type of job duties and what a person does. So if I take an example of the IT industry, a Java developer would have a different NOC code, a manual tester would have a different NOC code, somewhere someone in the DevOps would have a different NOC code, an automation engineer would have a different NOC code and so on. After the profile is successfully created online, Based on certain parameters like age, education, job experience, spousal factors, etc., you would score a certain number of points and the total would be called your CRS score. CRS stands for Comprehensive Ranking System. You would receive an invitation to apply which is called as an ITA from the Government of Canada once the cutoff score equals or goes below your CRS score. So let's say that if your CRS score is 445 and when the next draw is conducted, the cutoff score is 449. So in that case, you won't get the ITA. Now, when the CRS score comes below 445 or equals 445, then you would get your ITA. So this is the, this is the complete concept. And apart from this, there's a concept of tie breaking rule, but I won't get in deep into it in this video at least. If your CRS score is well below cutoff scores, you can apply through different PNP programs as well. So you need not get disheartened if your CRS score is pretty low. If your CRS score is in you know, 350s, 380s, or maybe in early 400s, and you don't see any chance of getting an ITA very soon, in that case, you can apply through different PNP programs. Each province has its own scoring system and different EOI profiles needs to be created for each province. Now what is an EOI profile? You need to sub, you need to actually express your interest in uh, different provinces. You need to create your own profile in their own websites. So EOI stands for expression of interest. A provincial nomination would add 600 additional points to your CRS score, ensuring that you get the ITA in the very next express entry draw. Now these draws are conducted generally after every 15 days so if you can get the provincial nomination, you can update your express entry profile. And of course, you would definitely get the ITA in the very next row. Okay, now the step four, arranging documents. Trust me, this is a really time consuming process. However, the time allotted to submit the application after you get the ITA is 60 days. Earlier, it was 90 days, but now it has been reduced by 30 days and it is now only 60 days or two months. Now, which are the documents required? Reference letters for each work experience declared, medical certificates, police certificates, proof of funds on bank letterhead, marriage, divorce, death certificate of spouse, 
which are applicable, birth or adoption certificate of children, passport scan of all pages, photographs in the specified format, language test report, your ECA report and if you've got the provincial nomination letter or if you've got the job offer letter then with the LMI approval you need that as well. Now reference letter, you definitely need the reference letter from all the employers there's a specified format for it. So you need to get the reference letter from all the employers in that specified format. Medical certificates, it's required. It is required for all the people who would be, you know, going to Canada, your spouse, your children, everyone. Police certificates. Now we need to get the police certificates from all the countries where you've lived in the past 10 years for six months or more in a row. So if you've actually lived only three months in a country, you don't need to get a police certificate for that country. Now proof of funds. Proof of funds this is something very important. You need to have a certain amount of saving in your bank account. And what is that amount of saving? You need to prove that you have this amount of saving in your bank account. If you're a single applicant, then you would need $12,669. If you're traveling with your spouse, in that case, you would need $15,772. If, uh, if you have one kid as well, in that case, you would need $19,390 and so on. Okay, so this was about the documents. Now moving on to the fifth step, which is submitting your application. So once you've collected all the documents, you need to scan them and you need to upload the scan copy of all those documents within the 60 days time frame. So if you do collect the documents in 15 days, it's well and good. You can go and upload it. If you take, you know, uh, one month, two months, totally fine, but you need to do it in within 60 days. Provide detailed information like your travel history, past residences of last 10 years. You need to give all that information and it's a lot of information that they ask in different kind of forms. And all of this is done online. You have to pay the visa and PR application fee as well. So how much is the fee? This is the official screenshot from the Canada.ca website. So, so if you're a single applicant in that case, you need to pay something around 1000 40 Canadian dollars and if you include your spouse as well in that case you need to pay double that amount now the processing times now the processing times after you submit the application you just have to wait they might process your application within a month but this is when you're really 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 lucky it generally takes from two to three months but it might take up to six months so this is the processing time one to six months now the step six Visa stamping, which is the very last step. Now, after you get the email from the from IRCC that your PR has been confirmed, you're given 30 days. In these 30 days, you have to go to the VFS office and submit few documents. After receiving that email of confirmation of PR, a single entry visa needs to be stamped on your passport. Small fee needs to be paid in the VFA center. Only passport and photographs needs to be submitted, but you need to carry the, the printout of that letter of that email which you get from IRCC. Now this visa is a single entry visa and this is only for the first time. So after you enter over there, you will get your PR card and of course you don't need that visa anymore. So this is the complete process. In that visa, you would have an expiry date over there and you have to land there before, before that visa actually expires. The processing times is one to two weeks. Generally it is done in just four or five days. So this is not a time consuming process. So these are the six steps of applying the PR through Express Entry Program. I just hope that this video was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please click the like button if you think it was helpful for you and share it with your friends if you think it can be helpful for your friends. And also subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet.